Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and in my last video I showed you how I put the, the cardboard pieces together for the unicorn mask. I think I used the cardboard from four cereal boxes. You can use the pattern if you want to. It's on my website now at UltimatePaperMache.com slash unicorn. There's a small charge for it. Or you can design one yourself using clay and put paper mache over it. I'll show you how to do that in my book. This is <laughs> this is where I got the idea for the unicorn, actually. I kind of stole my own idea that, to make this guy. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how I finished it. The, I think most unicorns are all white, and I went ahead and played around with some, some spray paint. It was a little weird. Um, I'm not very good at spray paint, and it, it took a lot of fiddling around, and it's not very traditional. It would be a lot easier to just make a white unicorn. But the one thing I do want to mention is that the, the dragonfly glaze that I used doesn't work all that great on white. Works great on colors. It worked really nice on the dragon. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll show you why at the end. Just in case you didn't watch my last video, I want to make sure that you be really, really careful when you make the eye holes. Be really safe. I'm the, you, you need the sharpest blade you can get and you have to be really, really careful but I think he turned out really nice. I just put some fake eyelashes on him just a few seconds ago. Now, obviously you can finish your unicorn any way you want to, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how I did mine. So I got all the brown paper on there. That was kind of fun. I'm using an old oatmeal box to hold him up. That works really good. Now I'm gonna take him out to the garage and use a spray primer. You can also use acrylic gesso or you can use just a, a primer that comes out of a can, in the kind that you use on your walls. Uh, anything will work. We just gotta get this uh, brown covered up so we can paint him white. Now what, I'm, what I've got is just a spray of some white primer. This is white acrylic paint warmed up with just a touch of raw sienna. And it's going to take several coats, I think, to cover the cold white of the, um, the primer. I did a real fast experiment to see if I could use my label paper for the Celtic knot and just go ahead and print it out on label paper and then stick it onto the unicorn and paint directly over it. So what I did is I just put a little piece of the label paper on some cardboard didn't put anything over it except for some paint and it wrinkled really bad. So that means that we either have to draw the Celtic design or any design you want, or we have to print the, the design on regular paper and stick it to the unicorn with Elmer's glue. So now that I know that this is gonna work if I use Elmer's glue, I'm gonna put it right here, kind of center it between these seams right here. don't want very much on there, but we do want it to go all the way out to the edges. Just making sure that all the edges are stuck down really good. This, this one's not quite. There it is, there. And my other test was to see what would happen if I put this paint that I found down in the basement. Uh, it has a, a metallic shimmer to it. That actually turned out kind of nice, I like it. Now before I go any further on painting them though, I want to make the hole because I, I want to put black around the edges. And this spot right here is where my eyes will go. I actually um, did put a piece of cardboard in front of my face and marked where the, my, the center of my eyes were. And then I held them up and I made sure that, that I would be able to see out of these two holes. So now with a really sharp blade, very carefully, I'm going to cut out, hopefully. Boy, it's not easy. If you happen to have a, um, a Dremel tool, or even just get started with a, uh, like a drill, that would help, I think. I might need to get a different blade. This one just doesn't seem to be doing it. Let me try this one instead. Brand new blade again. Much better. But, 
I am going to have to take this someplace where I can sit down and hold it in a better position because this is um, it's really awkward it will be a lot easier for me to do if I'm holding it differently now I'm not going to um, open up this part here I'm just going to open up this half of this black area and I'll be right back as soon as I can get that done I can't actually control <laughs> spray paint I'm not a graffiti artist for sure um, and so I just got it everywhere and I want to clean it up a lot obviously if you think that unicorns are supposed to be all white you wouldn't have any of this on here anyway but I do so and I need to clean it up a little bit so I'm using the same color white that I used before and I'm gonna try to get all of it out where it doesn't belong and then kind of fade it in with a dry brush let's see if that works yeah I think it's working if I could control it better I would actually like um, the spatter uh, look around his muzzle too but it just it just went too far I'll try something now I want to paint all the edges in the eye holes black just to make them kind of disappear I think a black felt tip pen might work really well for the black areas on the the Celtic knot. I'm going to paint his eyes blue and I'm not going to try for realism. There are some amazing YouTube videos on how to paint a horse's eyes. This is not going to be one of them <laughs> because I'm, I'm just trying to get this done. I normally paint the, the pupil of an eye last. But this time I'm going to do it first just because they have kind of, um, it's kind of fuzzy around the edges. And one thing I did out in the garage when you weren't looking is I covered up the Celtic knot and I hit the eye and right around the front of his nose with the spray primer because it was the only white paint I had. It, it just softened it up a little bit, made it look a little bit better, I think. It would be really nice, I think, if if it was done by somebody who knew what they were doing. That just doesn't happen to be me. I'm just going to use some cool blue, apple barrel cool blue. It's really cerulean blue. I don't know why they don't call it that. And I'm trying to just kind of go into the black part a little bit. Now maybe just a, just one little dab of white. Maybe two dabs for a reflection. Ooh, that really looks nice. No horse would have ice like that, I'm sure, but a unicorn might. Now, since we're not going to be painting, or at least I'm not going to be painting the eyes with the dragonfly glaze, I can go ahead and paint everything else with it. That's this stuff. I've had this for probably five or ten years <laughs> and until the dragon I had no excuse to use it. I'm going to try to not get any sparkles in the black parts of the knot, the jewelry. The, the, the um, eye hole wouldn't have any sparkles so it would kind of stand out. It is showing up just a little bit. I'm going to put some fingernail polish on the eyes.
You could use a lot of different things for the mane, but I decided kind of on a whim to buy this stuff from Amazon.com. It's called Lovely Lash from the Dark Horse Yarn Company. Got a horse right there. <laughs> That's not why I bought it, but <laughs> I was looking for something that would be kind of shiny. And I also I have a little bit of this ribbon from India that was left over from making the um, the Three Wise Men a couple of years ago. So I thought these would go nicely together. And I only bought one skein. It says it's um, 92 yards. It just It's a tiny little thing though. So I don't know. It's, it's really thin. Hopefully we can make it work. I, I think I think it'll be okay. And this piece of cardboard that's about, what is it, 12, about 13 to 14 inches deep. And I'm going to wrap this around the cardboard. Okay, after messing around for a while, I've decided the best way to do it is just to knot these together at the top, just in, in bunches. So I cut off, I don't know what, it's six inches of yarn and I just went around I don't know maybe five I'm gonna tie it real tight in a square knot pulling it really tight and I'll just keep doing that all the way across if you've already thought of a better way to do this and you probably have please put in in a comment down below so that we can all learn from that because I know this is not the best way to do it okay I've got them all tied off what I'm going to do now is take off one at a time and cut it cut it down here at the bottom and glue it on to the top of the head. I've got some Elmer's glue and I'm using Elmer's because it dries clear where the the wood glue might hold on better, but it dries yellow and that would be weird. So I'm going to put a fairly big glob right here, but right in the middle. I don't want it I just want it to uh, glue the very, very middle of the strand where it's knotted. It is holding, but I'm just really concerned that some unicorns might move around a little bit more. And we wouldn't want the uh, the mane to come loose, so I'm pushing it all over on one side, and I'm eventually going to have most of it hanging on this side of the head. It's being held on now by the other glue, so I don't have to worry about it too much while I'm messing with it here. I found some eyelashes down in the basement. They're not the ones I used for the elephant because those had stick them on them. They were self-adhesive and these are not. The ones I got for the elephant are <laughs> more longer and fuller, more like, like for drag queens. <laughs> but unicorns just gonna have to put up with these. I think they're gonna be pretty cool if I can get them stuck on there. I tried this stuff called uh, Loctite Super Glue says it bonds skin in seconds but it doesn't does not bond eyelashes in seconds so I'm going to try this stuff instead this E600 I think this is probably just as dangerous to use oh when it comes out in a bigger glob fortunately it's clear so if this doesn't work it, I shouldn't have to to repaint hopefully This end doesn't want to stay where it belongs. I don't even know if you can see those or not. I think it was worth it. You can't really see them far off, but I think it looks really nice. I, I don't think we're supposed to use this E600 in the house though. It's got warnings all over it. So I got the other one on there. Um, it's very, very subtle.
and the glue did um, work really fast. This, now that I've got this close up, you can see how I, I uh, told you that the, the glaze doesn't come out quite even. You can see kind of little streaks of more purple in here. That only happens on the white. It works beautifully on anything that's darker, but on the white, it doesn't look so great. But if you weren't looking at it really, really close up, you wouldn't be able to tell. So I'm not going to redo it, but next time I would, I would choose some other way to make it glittery. If you have an idea of how we could do that, some product that you think would work better, please let us know. So he's all dry, he's all done, and I just, <laughs> I had an awful lot of fun with this guy. I, this and the dragon were really fun for me because I don't get to play with shapes and colors and things very often. I do realistic animals as a general rule, but um, making things where you, where you really can't get it wrong because it's totally made up, that, that's just really fun. Now, if you want to make a unicorn using this pattern, again, you can find it at ultimatepapermache.com slash unicorn. Uh, the dragon is at ultimatepapermache.com slash dragon mask. If you make either the dragon or the unicorn, please let us see how they come out. Come back to the ultimatepapermache.com. Uh, go to the, uh, the daily sculptures page. There's a link to it at the top of every single uh, post on the blog. And we would really love to see how yours comes out. I know it's going to be very different. We all have such creative ideas, and um, I, I just can't wait to see how yours looks. So please come back and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.